All right, everybody, how's it going? We are just a day away from the start of the NFL season. Officially, I know the the, uh, the Bears and the Packers played in an absolute snore fest on uh, Thursday, but like it feels like tomorrow is like the day because everybody's going to play except four teams, uh, which will be the Texans, Saints, Broncos, and of course the Oakland Raiders who have today cut Antonio Brown, so that'll be fun to find out where he goes to. So anyway... Um, you know, uh, we already did the 2019 NFC playoff predictions or division winners predictions. That is, uh, of course, on the channel. You can go watch that. Today, we're going to upload the AFC, and then we're going to have some other videos, but that's not the point here. We're going to go over our 2019 AFC playoff predictions. There probably won't be as much, um, you know, wild picks in this one, whereas in the last one, I had the uh, Saints and Rams not make the playoffs. I think this is a little more subdued. Um, I think the AFC is a better overall conference. You'll see kind of worse records, but that's because they have some really bad teams in a very good conference. Um, I prefer the AFC. I like AFC football more than NFC football. Um, I think the NFC AFC teams are better, uh, historically better. In my, it's just my opinion on it. You know, the, the, you know, we, we can debate it either all day long, which is the better conference. Um, I would say it's AFC because it has the Patriots just and everyone's like, well, that's only one good team. It's like, yeah, they've sort of destabilized it. Manning had the same effect. They've also got the Steelers. And anyway, that's kind of let's move on. All right. So let's go over the uh, AFC playoff uh, winners or whatever. For the AFC West in fourth place, we have the Oakland Raiders. I actually had them having a better season than this. Uh, but when you really go and look at that team without Antonio Brown, without the threat of him being around, um, it's not a very wowing roster. All their receivers are old or they're just, I mean, they got Tyrell Williams, but it's like, oh, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know what their defense is going to be. Who knows how effective and good Josh Jacobs is going to be as a running back. Uh, who knows how good Derek Carr is going to be. The whole thing's a question mark. So, um, and, and losing Antonio Brown when he, when he was going to be a huge focal point of your offense is going to throw you off, um, <clears throat> especially early in the season, you know. And they, they have a pretty brutal early season schedule uh, where they have to go overseas and it's just it's just a mess five and eleven for the Raiders but it's a better it's better than last year um, and then we got the uh, Denver Broncos it's, it's it's almost the same thing I have no idea what this team's going to be the aging superstar defense uh, but they do have Vic Fangio so that'll probably help that side of the ball but it's really another giant question mark about the offense. You've got Joe Flacco. How's he going to respond? How's he going to play? I think he's getting older. This is like his, what is this, 12th or 13th year in the NFL at this point. Uh, I think he got drafted in 07, so do the math, or oh, in 08. I, I don't remember. Um, he's been around for quite a while, though, so he's probably, you know, he's aging. We're going to see how he plays. Um, uh, the receivers, Emmanuel, I believe Emmanuel Sanders is coming back from injury. Cortland Sutton's going to be exciting. I don't know. They're, they're going to be better than last year, but I don't know by how much. It's they, They're a big question mark team, uh, for me personally anyway. So 8-8, eight and eight, maybe 9-7 and seven if they can eke something out and maybe upset the Chiefs once. Uh, or, you know, maybe upset the char You know, we'll, we'll see about the Broncos. Uh, maybe they steal one against Green Bay or some shit. I don't know. Uh, Los Angeles Chargers, um, They I think they'll regress by quite a bit. By about two games. No Derwin James for at least the first, what is it, chunk of the season. I'll say eight or nine games. Uh, Melvin Gordon, not going to play for him. Uh, they lost Tyrell Williams, but they still have a stacked offense. Uh, their defense is still really, really good. Uh, Phillip Rivers is obviously Phillip Rivers. There's no real uh, question mark with how he's going to play. So um, I don't know what the running back situation is going to be. But they do have a very good offense outside of being able to run the ball. Uh, they kind of use the running back in a throwing role a lot too. So they're in a passing role rather. Uh, so I don't know. Um, losing Derwin James is pretty bad. But I believe they drafted Nasir Adderley. And they, they have some tremendous depth. Um, I think they're going to suffer a little bit due to the things they've lost. Um, and maybe have injured. Um, 10 and 6. I feel like that's a fair record for the Chargers. And I have them in the playoffs. And then, of course, that would leave the Kansas City Chiefs. There's not much to say here about this team. I think they'll lose more, but that's only because I think the Broncos are going to be better. I think the Raiders are going to be better. They're playing the uh, NFC North with the Lions, Vikings, Packers, and Bears. Tough games ahead of them. So, you know, they won't have the uh, surprise of Patrick Mahomes, if you will. 
Um, no one's going to be surprised by this offense. You cannot, it's, you know what I mean? I wonder how he's going to respond. Um, I think their defense is still very, very bad. And, uh, and you know, until we see the defense actually start making moves, like in the regular season, it's still a bad defense. They didn't really do much to fix it. Sorry. Like, what, what kind of secondary is that? Tyron Matthew? Oh, cool. He did nothing in Houston. Good shit. So, I don't know. I This team's still going to win a lot of games. Still going to win the West. <laughs> Easily. Um, minus, like, some, dude, like, knock on wood, horrible injury. 11-5 um, and five for the Chiefs seems about right. Uh, yeah, that seems right, right? Maybe not as good as last year, but just still about the same. Um, they are not the number one seed. They are the three seed in my prediction. So the AFC South, this is going to be a shit show of a division with everything that's gone on. Um, I, I think the Titans have a good defense. They have good offensive pieces, but I think they regress horribly this year because they've neglected the quarterback position. Uh, <laughs> fucking Mariota can't stay healthy, and when he does, he's very, very average at best. Um, and then they have Ryan Tannehill, who got <laughs> sent away from Miami, so that's hilarious. Uh, like he's going to come in and do any better. I've seen him play a lot. So let me tell you, he's not good. Uh, the situation's bad. Um, I don't know. Like, it's just one of those things where you're like, man, you really are screwing up a pretty good team outside of the quarterback situation. And I don't know if this team is good enough to win. Like, I don't know if outside of the quarterback, they're good enough to win despite the quarterback. You know what I mean? Kind of like how the Bears can do it this year at some point. Um, so 5-11 and 11 for me for the Titans. I think they are a major, major regressor. I think the Jaguars take a couple steps forward. But um, again, we've never seen Nick Foles work outside of Philadelphia. Uh, specifically, we've never seen Nick Foles really work outside of Doug Peterson or Doc Peterson's specific offensive systems. Um, and with the magic of Philly and the magic of being Big Dick Nick, I just like until we see this offense working... I do not ever buy the Jaguars. I'm never going to make the mistake again of picking them to be a good team. I did that last year. I had them winning like 11 or 12 games despite Blake Bortles, and they motherfucking won five. So you know what? I'm not ever going to say anything good about this team until they're doing good. Fuck them. Uh, the Colts, I mean, I like Jacoby Brissett, but like this is going to be his first full or second full year starting. I don't know, and, and I believe that first full year was not exactly the best. Um, I believe they won four games <laughs> and I know he didn't start the whole season or if he did, it was, it was whatever, but, um, wasn't exactly the greatest go around, but, um, I mean, and, and if they go nine and seven, it's only a game worse than last year. And I think that's about what they'll do. Um, I know that's kind of an insult to luck, but this team has improved dramatically even between off seasons. They've made some really good additions uh, on the defense, on the offense. Frank Reich's system is going to have another year. Jacoby has another year in the system. It's pretty much all he's known is Frank Reich. Um, so I I'm fairly confident in this team. They have Paris Campbell, who's going to be fun to watch. Um, yeah, and the team really believes in the kid. They got Darius Leonard, who could, who, could win defense, who could win defensive player of the year this year if he balls the fuck out. Uh, I, I like the Colts going about nine and seven, but I, they missed the playoffs in, in my predictions. Um, and then we have the Houston Texans repeating as division champions. When they when, when they traded for Tunzel and they got Kenny Stills to go with along with DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller, um, and they have Duke Johnson and I believe they have another running back. Um, I went, oh wow, okay, this is a good ass team again. Um, they're gonna they're gonna win games again. They're gonna have a little bit more time for Deshaun to throw it. Um, and that's really all the kid needed. Don't let him get sacked 60 plus times again. And then you'll have a better year. Well, I think they'll lose more, but that's because improved play in the division, yada, yada, yada. First place schedule. So we'll see how the Texans do. I think they'll be about 10 and 6. This should be their division to win. Um, AFC North, um, who do we got here? We got the Bengals going 5 and 11. Not much really to say about this team. Um, it's going to be a giant rebuild process for Zach Taylor and Andy Dalton because they have to deal with the inadequacies of Marvin Lewis, and you already know how that goes. 5-11. and 11. Sorry, Bengals fans. I just don't believe in your team. At least I'm not saying three wins. Plus, uh, who knows how long A.J. Green's going to be out. That's a problem. 
All right, here's the one that's going to get me all the shit in the world. I'm actually picking the Browns to finish third place in their division. Sorry, Browns fans. When you win, when you go 1-31 in, in over two seasons or whatever the fuck that horrible stretch was, two years later, I'm not going to pick you to win your division um, because you traded for Odell, a guy who's contributed nothing to win columns, and Olivier Vernon, who's done exactly the same thing. Remember that they're on the Giants. They were very good. But guess what? Their individual shit didn't win them anything over the last couple years. Giants haven't been good since since 2016. Odell's been on that, uh, all those teams. And his big numbers, if you want to say that, have absolutely no impact on the win column. No, neither does uh, Olivier Vernon. So I guess to me, it's like, okay, cool. You, you can put up big numbers and shit, but they're not translating to anything positive for your team other than losses so and you went and added players like that i mean kareem hunt very good signing but you don't get him till week eight or well week nine rather or whatever the fuck how that works out half the season um baker's gonna be good your defense looks like it's gonna be pretty good i mean baker did go what like two and five against good teams last year during his stretch um <laughs> i know he wasn't that good against actually like good teams so that's something to look forward to, something to look at. They have a lot of primetime games this year. So I, I'm very curious to see how this team responds. Um, I also think the Steelers are going to be tremendously better. If you haven't watched the Steelers this preseason, uh, James Washington is going to be a legit number two. And Juju's going to eat. So, And James Conner's just as fine. And now do you believe that the problem with the Steelers was literally one dude? It was, it was goddamn Antonio Brown. Now that that cancer is gone, you think they're going to be worse? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. Watch out for the Steelers this year, you guys. They're they're going to be a real weird dark horse. Um, not even a dark horse. <laughs> this is their division to lose. And um, that means, you know, the Ravens will finish at 10-6, and six, in my opinion. Great defense. Earl Thomas makes it even better than what Eric Weddle could provide. No offense to Eric. Um... Yeah, they're, they're just a great defense. The offense looks good. They added uh, Marquise Brown and some little gadgetries. Lamar looks like he can throw the ball better. He's going to rush a lot less, throw it more, he said. So 10-6 and six for the Ravens, and they'll make the playoffs. And then I have the Pittsburgh Steelers going 11-5 and five and making the division. They literally only had one problem last year, too, actually. They um, couldn't tackle on defense. Devin Bush solves a lot of those problems. And then... Um, well, the defense is going to be better with Bush. Nobody can deny that. That's just, he, he looks so good already. And then, and then on offense, the problem was Antonio Brown. No Antonio Brown. Big Ben's getting along with the team better all of a sudden, which is crazy. You can look up every single report about it. That team has great chemistry all of a sudden. Chemistry was the issue last year. I don't know. Steelers should, Big Ben could be a dark horse to win the MVP. I, I don't have him on mine, um, but he could. Uh, Steelers should win the division 11 and 5. Save the best for last, right? I'm just going to tell the Dolphins fans what they want to hear. You guys are going to get to a tug of Iola next year. Congratulations. I don't know what the fuck you're doing with your football team, though. You guys could also wind up signing Antonio Brown as well as the Patriots simply because he's from Miami. That's just, I mean, you guys could get Antonio Brown and then. In the draft, you could wind up with uh, Tua Tagovailoa, or however the fuck you say his name. Congratulations, that's what you're obviously aiming for uh, with everything you've done to that team. Holy shit. And then the Jets, I think you do exactly the same as you did last year, because I hate you and you're a terrible Ram franchise. Um, number one, you bid on CJ Mosley. <laughs> I still think that's a mistake and a half. Because when was the last time the Ravens gave up on a good young linebacker that was going to transform a defense that was the top one of the top linebackers in the game? They didn't give up on Suggs. They didn't give up on Ray Lewis. They just don't give up on those kind of dudes. Uh, they pay them, and they never let them leave that Ravens system. And plus, I wonder how exposed he's going to be outside of the Ravens system. You could call me crazy, whatever. Um, I also don't trust their receivers. I don't think Jamison Crowder is that good. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, I think he's a system of the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line. I remember him at State. He wasn't that mind-blowing. But all of a sudden, he gets to fucking Pittsburgh behind one of the best running lines in the NFL, and he explodes. 
while last year we seen James Conner explode onto the scene with a pretty good fucking statistical year. I think he had a better rushing the ball year than Le'Veon's ever had. Um, and that kind of, to me, went, oh, okay, it's the offensive line. I wonder how well he does with that garbage-ass line the Jets got. Let's wait and find out. Darnold will be good. He's the bright spot of the team. I think he's really good, but he's going to leave that he's going to leave that shithole at the end of this rookie deal. You can guarantee he's not going to be a long-term Jet. Uh, he's too fucking good for that team. Quinton Williams was a good pick, too. Shocking the Jets didn't blunder that. Um... Yeah, you have a couple bright spots on the team, but we'll we'll see how it all plays out. Having, I just, ew, it's the Jets, dude. They're going to fuck this up. I think the Bills are on the rise, though. I think they have the better of the two young quarterbacks. Josh Allen looks like a weird young Big Ben who can launch it. Um, and uh, I like some of the moves they made on offense, getting like Cole Beasley, some, some dependable targets for Josh Allen. Uh, Ed Oliver was a steal of a pick for them. Very, very good pick. Um, I don't know. Their defense is always good. It was top, what well, it was top three or top five in the NFL last year. Getting at Oliver will only make it better. Uh, that, and that's a bit of a scary thing for me, knowing that the Bills are probably one year away from seriously fucking with us for this division. Um, I think they're the closest of any of the teams in the, uh, AFC East to fuck with us. I think they need one more year of development with Josh Allen and, and then he's there. This is going to be next year. You guys. Uh, Patriots fans, get ready. It's not going to be fun dealing with that defense. Especially when Brady's 43. Patriots are going to go 14-2. and two. Look, go, go look at their schedule. They have the 31st easiest schedule. It might be the 32nd easiest now. They, they probably got the easiest by now. It's them or the Rams do. And um, the only hard games they have are Philly, Dallas, Pittsburgh, and Kansas City. So at worst, they could lose four games. But typically, they beat those kind of teams. Mahomes hasn't beaten him. Ben hasn't beaten him. So I can take those two down. And that leaves the Eagles and the Cowboys. Cowboys versus Patriots. It's in New England. Advantage Patriots. I was going to do 15-1 and one and just leave maybe one game for one of those four teams to beat us. Or maybe Miami does it. But I doubt it. We play Miami early this year. So I'm very fond of my team's chances of going 14-2. and two. Um... If they, if they sign a certain wide receiver, I want to come in and amend this to 16-0 again. But we'll see what happens as time progresses. Um, but yeah, so I, Patriots obviously are the number one seed. Here is my AFC playoff picture. The Los Angeles Chargers will be the sixth seed. The Baltimore Ravens, the five seed. The Houston Texans will get that number four seed and be, you know, the first non-wildcard team. And then we have Kansas City finishing just under the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know a bit of a controversial pick, but I just have a feeling. Uh, and then we have the Steelers being the number two seed, getting home field or, you know, a, a first round by. And then the Patriots uh, first round by secure home field advantage, yada, yada, yada. This isn't I think this is correct. As much as uh, anyone might want to fight me on it. I don't know if the ordering's correct, but I think every one of these teams are correct. I think I did a very good job getting to this to this as the end. I know you might like question the other placing of other teams. Most of you are not going to have the Steelers in there. Uh, most of you are going to throw the shitty fucking st <laughs> like the stupid Browns in there because you know th you know they're a threat. <laughs> uh, so I think this is correct. Uh, we'll we'll see how accurate this is um, in terms of the teams by the end of the season. I think it's it's about a hundred. So, all right, that's the that's those are my division predictions for the AFC. I'll go through it really quick. So, I have the Patriots winning the East, uh, or yeah, winning the East. This uh, the Steel. Uh, I just bit my tongue. The Steelers win the North. Uh, the Chiefs go ahead and win the West. The Texans win the South. Ravens and then Chargers are the two wild card. And yeah, sounds like a pretty good season. Sounds like that's going to be correct. So, the next video I'm going to be working on and uploading is going to be the NFL playoff predictions where I go through the AFC, NFC wild cards, then the uh, divisional round, then the championship round, then the Super Bowl. And then we move on to the awards video uh, in the next, you know, in two later. So, uh, I don't know. This was a little bit shorter. I'm starting to kind of get the point of it. Um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so, I don't know. Leave your thoughts down below with what you uh, think of of the video um or what you think of my uh predictions sorry i'm just out of breath let me let me let me catch my breath so 
anyway, um, yeah, just let me know what you think of uh, the predictions, winners, and shit like that, and uh, what are your picks to win the divisions? Uh, who do you think is going to be whatever? Save save the playoff stuff for the for the playoff video, uh, which will be coming very very soon. Um, within minutes of this being uploaded, the other one will pop up. So it's just going to be upload, 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 boom. Um, anyway, thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. Uh, let me leave your stuff down below. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. It really helps. We're going to be doing tons of NFL shit. So uh, go Patriots and uh, bye bye.